Hey guys, welcome to Chaos Theory. My name is Nicholas Burial, and in this video, we're gonna look more at pasta. So now that we've modeled everything and we've created the basic lighting setup and materials and so on for uh, this thing, we're gonna look a little bit more on the more complex materials than we have so far, because we're gonna try and look at the, uh, the kind of the material we need to try and create for this pasta to make it look a little bit more believable. So in order to do that, we can actually use the material we made earlier uh, in the video before and make use of this new um, translucency option that we have for uh, the V-Ray have gotten. So they've actually changed their models. Uh, a, f a few updates ago, it was uh, called, uh, there was like a VAX and a hybrid model and so on. I didn't actually use it that much, but they've changed it around a little bit now so, uh, to work in a different way. So I think that's a neat way for us to try and uh, actually check that out. There are other ways to create um, subsurface scattering materials, which is what we're going to do. Um, one of them would be by using V-Ray Fast SSS2. Um, but that material is a little bit more complex and maybe better suited for actually more complex um, subsurface scattering materials as, such as uh, flesh or skin or something like that. There's a lot of presets here um, that you can use to begin with, um, but I definitely recommend just trying to use the more simplified version by uh, via translucency in the V-Ray material itself. So. We already have this pasta material on here. So what we can try and do is open our VFB uh, and start our interactive rendering. And what we can do here is that we can create a windowed version for our interactive region render, is what it's called, and go to real zoom and then actually just zoom in on the pasta itself. This will make, uh, if I press Control L and H, I will remove the, um, history and layers. So this will make it possible for us to zoom in while actually keeping the same camera angle as we had before. So that's a neat little way of isolating uh, whatever we have in our scene without changing the camera angle because we might want to actually use this camera angle as our final result. So we will see everything from a bit far away, but in order to see the details more clearly when we need to change the translucency, well, then for this instance, it's a little bit easier. So we have a diffuse color. It's a pale yellowish color, which is fine. Um, we've modified the glossiness a little bit and the reflect is right now uh, all white, which is also OK, I think. So what we want to do is try and add translucency to, to our pasta. So if we take the drop down from translucency from none, we have two different ways of doing this. There's a volumetric and a SSS type of translucency. Um, as a rule of thumb, the volumetric is more used together, uh, used for materials that are less opaque. So if you had like a ruby or emerald, or if you wanted to do maybe juice, uh, like orange juice or something like that that is you know less opaque kind of materials um materials that are closer to water than they are to uh, you know a brick basically so if you have opaque materials like you wanted to you want to use your sss uh, model instead so the sss model it would be for well it could be for pasta it could be for plastics or anything that has you know that is basically opaque so if we go to the SSS here, we have a scatter radius and a SSS color. The scatter radius in itself is doesn't do much because that's the color that gets scattered around basically. So the, the primary color of it. And depending on the amount of SSS, so the SSS amount we have down here, we are basically mixing between these two colors. So this color, we probably want a little bit more dark. Um, we can play around with it. You can see how it calculates all the different lighting from here. You can see a certain amount of thickness in it. And the SSS color would be the more outer skin of it or the, the, the subsurfaced skin, if you will, um, which would usually be a 
maybe a bit lighter color than the other one. So now you can see, you can really start to get the depth of this. So depending on your SSS amount, you can basically, if you turn it all the way down, you'll go more into, I think I said the scatter radius, but you're basically introducing more of the diffuse itself. So if my diffuse were to be, let's just copy this. If it were to be blue, for example, and I put on the SSS amount to one, we actually can't see the diffuse color at all. Um, I like to leave it a little bit on as well, uh, though as a color that I might need, because I might not want my SSS amount to be one. I might need it to be a little less than one to give it, um, to make it a bit more opaque, basically. Uh, the higher this number is, the less opaque it will uh, become. So in this case, we can try out some different values. I haven't actually made this before, so I'm just messing around with it until I get something that I think looks a little bit more like um, the kind of material I want. The scale itself, um, see if we can actually get this to do this. It doesn't always use this. Okay, sure. So the scale itself will, if we decrease and increase it, it'll change the scale of the model itself, making um, making the effect basically larger, uh, as if the model itself was a lot larger in 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 real life. Sorry. Um, so we can try and try and change it a little bit around. I'm not really doing a good. Um, I'm not really explaining this way too well, so I will recommend you that you open up the Google Docs, uh, sorry, not the Google Docs, the, the Chaos Docs for the new translucency uh, settings that are in there. There are some really good examples in that docs. I'll put a link to it in the description. So please go there and see some of those examples to try to get a better understanding on how the scale, the scatter radius, the SSS color and the SSS amount actually works. And you can put that into uh, maybe a bit, uh, a bit better perspective while uh, watching this tutorial on where you can just see me, you know, messing a little bit around with the settings until I get, you know, something that resembles what I want, basically. Um, try and take our glossiness and increase that a little bit to make it a little bit more. We do not want our glossiness to be too high because I think that if the glossiness gets too high, this will become more wet looking and thus looking more and more like a cooked pasta and not a raw uh, uncooked pasta. And I want to go for the uncooked look because we want to store him in a in a glass jar, which would make a lot more sense that that we have non cooked, you know, um, pastas in there. So yeah just you know fool a little bit around with it try and play with the um with the settings and see what you get maybe you know dial in the colors just a little bit more but actually i'm pretty happy with this we still get a bit of an effect from the subsurface scattering it's not too much so yeah all right as a last note if you do use uh volumetrics obviously you probably shouldn't for um for getting the right effect for pasta but if you're doing like a um, a ruby or something like that, um, like gemstones, and, and you want them to really pop with uh, SSS, you might want to try and use uh, volumetrics, and you would want to use that together with refraction colors. And whereas here, we're making the object a little bit less opaque uh, in the SSS model, but we're not doing it by using refraction at all. So that usually goes together well. So if you go to volumetrics, you know, you need refraction as far as I remember at least. Um, but again, you can read up on it a little bit on the um, Chaos Docs page. I will link it for the 3ds Max version. If you're not using 3ds Max and you're still using my tutorials uh, for maybe Maya or something like that, good on you. Um, that's really cool. Uh, I'm a Mac user uh, as it is right now, so that's what I'm, you know, using. Um, but you can find, you know, help in the files down there for uh, Houdini, uh, Maya, and yeah, basically anything else. So yeah, cool. I think that was it for now. We have a pretty decent look. It looks kind of the same from all the way over here. But as soon as we start rendering in higher quality and we set up more, maybe a, a bit more decent lighting, um, it'll be really cool. So. This is it for now. Next time, we're gonna try and use Mass Effects for the first time in uh, at least 
Chaos Fury's history, um, to get a lot of pastas trapped inside this jar that looks really well. And then we, we can use that later on maybe for an interior visualization or something like a product renderer. I will just do it as a product renderer, but yeah, that's, uh, that's the general idea of it. So stay tuned for the next video and I'll see you then. Okay, bye.